Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Crypto markets absolutely tanking today, even more severely than yesterday, which frankly was bad enough. That had people in tremendous fear. Uh, so are we in some sort of irreversible tailspin? Are the, the best days of this cycle already behind us? We're just going to keep plummeting to the downside, entering a bear market for a number of years before we resume to the upside. Uh, well, not so fast on that point. And look, I, I know, there, there's, um, there was a, a reputable analyst because uh, I, I found the one. Some of you, I'm sure, saw this video that I published because it was just so fascinating to come across. I came across a reputable analyst who I've been following for years who is not biased against XRP, who is predicting XRP will hit 13 cents. And he started warning about price levels, which we practically hit today, fairly close. So I do want to talk about that a little bit as well. But it's not all doom and gloom. In fact, I will tell you this, I personally am still anticipating uh, massive moves to the upside. We've seen this movie before so far as I'm concerned. And uh, one very popular analyst has said, frankly, you know, as, as long as Bitcoin stays above $38,000, there's no way we're going back into a bear market. So if you're fearful out there, I understand this is what price action will do to humans. It doesn't mean you're bad or stupid. It just means you're normal. I'm the weird one that doesn't get emotionally impacted by this stuff. Um, but... To be clear, there's reason to be very optimistic here, and nothing goes up in a straight line literally forever. Corrections are required. They're normal even in bull markets, and we are in a bull market. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. As I record this video, it is 3.49 p.m. Central Time, Thursday, July 4th, 2024. So uh, to all my fellow Americans out there, happy birthday, America. Have a happy 4th out there. Uh, XRP currently 44.3 cents, but uh, did drop as low as 43.6 cents, according to Live Coin Watch. That's a doozy. That's not, that's just, yeah, yeah, I hate to see it. Yeah, I hate to see it. But here's Bitcoin. Uh, you know, 58,185 bucks, but 24 hour low of $56,801. Crypto Fear and Green Index, 44 out of 100, but it only updates once every 24 hours. Uh, it doesn't update for another three hours and nine minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and hazard a guess that's going to be a fair bit lower. I'm going to, just a wild guess, call me crazy, but I think it's probably going to be a lot lower than 44 out of 100. And of course, there's always a narrative when stuff like this happens. Here's the latest from Coindesk. Uh, Bitcoin nosedives under $58,000 amid Mt. Gox German government wallet movements. And they write, uh, Mt. Gox wallets dormant for a month showed activity with the test transactions, uh, with test transactions, hitting, hinting at potential asset distributions and increased selling pressure. Uh, and it's not just that. They also write, the sell-off came as wallets belonging to defunct crypto exchange Mt. Gox showed signs of activity for the first time in a month, and the German Federal Criminal Police Office moved over $75 million to crypto exchanges. And so, folks, there's always a narrative to go along with this stuff. To what degree is this what really caused it? I'm skeptical. I'm kind of skeptical. And even if it technically caused it, we were at a moment anyway where analysts across the board were like, uh, yeah, consolidation is normal, and so would a dip to the downside, frankly. I've been highlighting that for weeks and weeks on end, frankly, it seems like, right? It's been a hot minute here. And so even if something finally is technically the catalyst, it doesn't mean that it wouldn't have happened if there was some sort of different news breaking anyway. I'm, all I'm saying is it's not specific to this, and I've been here long enough to know that there's always a narrative tied to almost to, to pretty much any price action. And in my estimation, rarely is it the case that this is the reason that the market is doing what it's doing. It's really more so that the market moves and then whatever's happening at the time, uh, what well, you attribute, attribute it to that, basically. So you, you guys can make up your own, have your own opinions on that. I'm not buying it. I just wanted to highlight it since it is what's being cited here. Uh, this makes more sense to me, though. So here's a post by chart analyst Detective. He shared this with his 463,000 followers on X Bitcoin USD price chart. But he overlaid, so that would be, of course, the, the white price here. That's Bitcoin. And he overlaid it upon a, a variant of the Wall Street cheat sheet, which I'm sure most of you have seen by this point, which basically just shows you uh, the psychology that occurs in human beings as you go through a typical market cycle. And I'm not going to read it off. You want to pause and take a look at these various points. Uh, the, the concept is absolutely true. And you can see that he's highlighting here 
We are just in a bear trap, which is a correction fed by overvaluation concerns and premature fears that cycle has ended. And if you're on X, don't you see all sorts of people screaming that the, the market cycle, it's already peaked and it's over? And that's a trap for people who are bearish, hence the name bear trap. And he's just saying, yeah, this is it. Yeah, I just I like the way Tech Dev posts because he doesn't he doesn't muddy the waters. He's pretty simple. He he just wrote hashtag Bitcoin shared this. You know what he means. You can see exactly what he's talking about right here. So consider this behaviorally because we're all basically we're biological robots. It is what it is, man. But here here's just a matter of fact statement so far as I'm concerned. And this is a post shared by Charting Guy. He wrote the same thing ten times. He wrote markets don't top on fear, and that is true. When we hit the peak of a market cycle, you will note that people will be feeling euphoria, not fear. If people are still feeling fear, there's still lots of move, room to move to the upside here. And then in a separate post, he wrote, markets top on euphoria. That is a matter of fact statement because we biological robots keep acting the same over and over and over again. That's the reason this damn chart exists with all the phases of how humans feel along the way. And then humans make important financial decisions based on the feel feels. That's all that's happening here. There is not anything else going on. Then there is this post from uh, the, the Nijin Tropic account on, uh, on X. And this is run by the two co-founders of Glassnode on-chain analytics firm. Big fan of them, of course. And they're kind of noting this is pretty normal here. It doesn't really change anything. So here's what they wrote. Do you have halfway jitters? Bitcoin has seen a period of strong selling. Various rumors on FinTwit are circulating why Bitcoin is pulling back. Is this the big thing, the big crash? Or is this just part of a normal correction in a strong bull trend? Our target has not changed. Bitcoin to reach $110,000 area before top is in. The consolidation we see now is merely a, a retest of the former all-time high area. Of course, we need to see it happening. A crossing of $64,000 and later $70,000 is needed, but for now, sentiment seems to be influenced by halfway jitters. So that's the phrase that they're using to describe this, and I say, fair enough. That's exactly what's going on here, which is why I'm hoping this is helping to calm your nerves if you're having trouble out there, but I've seen this time and time and time again, uh, having been in crypto now since late 2017, you don't go up without dramatic pullbacks that make you question your very reason for existing. Like, pretty, that's pretty much how in-depth and intense it gets, right? And so people are feeling like that. Like, they're stupid, they made terrible decisions, and they're having trouble sleeping, and I get that. And that just, again, makes you normal. But just, if you could zoom out a little bit and look at the broader context and understand, but it would be weird if this didn't happen. It's not weird that it is happening in a bull market. It'd be weird if it didn't happen. That would be the first time it's not happening, right? <laughs> because it's happened in every single bull market we've ever had in crypto. So here it is. You know, and as, as pointed out by Checkmate, who, by the way, he used to be their, I think the title was lead analyst at Glassnode, but he's, he's also, a, uh, well, was one of the Glassnode guys, Checkmate. Uh, real sharp dude here. And he simply wrote, chop, 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 solidation. Bitcoin. One does not digest an 18-month up move with three months of sideways, sit tight. And so certainly that point is not lost to me. So look at the people that have been here for more than five seconds and are into analysis. What are they all telling you? This is normal. And for good reason, for good reason, they're, they're, they're telling you this is normal. Because if you just look, ba look based on the past, this stuff happens, you know, bull run continues to the upside. Markets don't top on fear. And we have been in fear mode um, even before things started tanking yesterday. We were already in fear. We weren't in euphoria. Most certainly we were not. And so the idea that we went up that high and then just three months of consolidation, we've been range bound without uh, any sort of dramatic, like, and that, that's it? Well, that wouldn't be probable, would it? So points, again, not lost on me. Here's a post from the blockchain backer. And this is the crypto total market cap, excluding the top 10 coins. That's what's on the top and then Bitcoin USD on the bottom. And he said, Half of the coins I stabbed at last week stopped out on that move. move. Uh, and I was pause to note, and I'm sure some of you were, he had publicly stated that he had bought um, some various cryptocurrencies as the market had already tanked even before uh, the most recent tank starting yesterday. And then he said, but the world hasn't broken into oblivion yet. 
Bitcoin is now at the range lows and the altcoin market cap reached the 50-week moving average. Seems like an important confluence uh, to, to bounce to maintain a trend. And so you can see here, in his opinion, it seems very clear it's not time to be panicking right now. And so he's not as forthright um, in, in terms of we are definitely going to the upside. Um, you know, pretty much all the other analysts I follow would, would uh, you know, well, they have, as I've highlighted for many of them. They're like, no, we're going to keep going to the upside. This doesn't mean anything. Um, but the blockchain backer, he, he's it's very respectable. He just takes a measured approach. He's just being intellectually honest. And I just, I, the point's not lost on me. We're not in oblivion yet, okay? Uh, we're, we're, you know, at range lows, as he cited here. This isn't the end of the world. But, you know, ultimately, obviously, you do need to see a continuation to the upside at some point. But it doesn't have to be literally this second. So it's fine. Uh, Credible Crypto also out there seeking to ease fears. Um, and, and I'll just note, too, like, these analysts that I follow, after we've hit euphoria, these are the types of analysts, there's a reason that I respect them, they will tell you, okay, now we're entering the bear market. And they will get yelled at intensely on social media for it. Because nobody wants to hear that. When, when people are in euphoria, and you've been moving up for so long, so intensely, nobody wants to hear that. But these are the analysts that will tell you when the top is in. They're not in agreement. In fact, it's the opposite. They're not in agreement that the top's in. Okay? Here's a credible crypto ad to say. Stopped out of my longs overnight. Gave back a lot of my recent gains, but it is what it is. So I'll just pause and note. He's, he is a trader, and that's, that's what he does for like his profession. He has publicly stated that. But most of his crypto, he actually just hodls, and he's publicly stated that as well. So if you're wondering why he's talking about that, that's why he's doing it. Now, for the average person, I will just tell you my personal opinion, it's a horrible idea, idea to trade. But the vast majority of humans will be better off if they just buy stuff and then wait for years on end for price to go up, and then if they're enticed to sell, they are, so be it. And that's pretty much it. Anyway, he continues. We haven't yet hit the $56,000 lows just above them now. But it seems like those lows will be taken sooner or later, and that officially opens the door to the $53,000 region as the next major area of support. So I want to pause and note here. At the outset, I mentioned that there's a popular analyst who said, as long as we're above $38,000, none of this is weird. It's, it's a big range, but that was him. It's credible crypto. He says, uh, nothing's broken, nothing's invalidated as long as we're above $38,000. So he does think we can go a bit lower. That'll scare people even more insanely. Um, but, you know... It, with how much alts are going to tank if that happens, maybe I'll even start jumping in and buying more. It's been probably a few months or so since I was buying crypto, but I'm not afraid to buy another dip if I'm sufficiently enticed here. Uh, but anyway, then he continues. He says, uh, we've seen our spot premium decline by about 50% thus far, so it seems like this is def a spot sell-off driving price lower here. What's also notable is open interest really hasn't budged on this drop. In fact, it has only climbed higher despite repeated long liquidations on every shove down. A short squeeze is a matter of time, in my opinion, but as long as fresh longs keep piling in on the way down in front of spot-driven sell-off, it's likely going to get worse before it gets better. So number one, best to avoid new longs slash trades until we see some positive price action develop ideally in the form of a major liquidation flush, open interest reset, or some lower time frame impulsive price action. Number two, alts likely to get hit if Bitcoin does continue lower. Again, some alts are in, are in or completing major distribution, so these may get hit and continue to bleed after, while others have barely moved up off their lows. Will probs get hit too? But in my opinion, you should be less concerned about these as they don't have much in terms of gains to give back. And number three, finally, spot buyers don't have to be too worried here, in my opinion. So listen up. This is going to be most of you listening. Most of you are not traders. Even if you do a little silliness here, they're getting in and out of positions based on feel feels. It doesn't make you a trader necessarily. <laughs> but he says, finally, and this is the category I fall into, Spot buyers don't have to be too worried here, in my opinion. As per prior updates, we can technically fall a lot lower on higher time frame without invalidating higher time frame bullish structure, and what comes after this correction is our next major leg to $100,000. That being said, if you are going to be buying on the way down, you need to be okay with being underwater for a bit. If you don't think you can do that, wait for number one, above to play out before dipping your toes in. 
with that being said, I will see you all soon on the other side. And so in my estimation, that's a rather um, optimistic outlook. And he's certainly being intellectually honest here. But it, it, that's the thing, like if you're a spot hole, and this is the reason, that it's, it's worth repeating on a day like this. Like, the reason, and I, I wish that more people could take this to heart because you'd have a lot easier time being in these markets and sleeping at night. But if you can just make peace with whatever the timeline ends up, ends up being for your crypto journey, I think you're going to have a lot better time here, which is why I say, even if all of these analysts are wrong, which technically is possible, sure. But, you know, I'm, I'm speaking in terms of probability, I doubt that they're wrong, but of course they could be. We could be entering a bear market, fine, whatever. I give that a very low probability. But what I would say is, even if that happens, do you believe if we fast forward a decade from now, that the crypto market pie is bigger than in 2024 or, or smaller. So fast forward a decade, it's 2034 now. Is the crypto pie bigger or smaller? Bigger, right? So what exactly is the problem? Not that we'd have to wait 10 years for it. I'm making a bigger point though. I'm saying even if we're entering a bear market, it does not matter because this will all be worth way more in the future, even if we're in a bear market. Is it the end of the world if you didn't sell during this bull market and it's the bull market actually coming to an end? Is it the end of the world for you, literally? Did you need that money right this second? Are you destroyed? Or is it the case that the market's going to come roaring back, even if it's a few years from now, and you'll have time to accumulate for a few years so you'll have that much more uh, when it does finally start rampaging to the upside? It's it's like, The market's giving you the opportunity even if we were to go into a bear market right this second. So that's why I don't... Worry. That's a big picture thought, but that's a big reason why I don't worry. I firmly and genuinely believe this this market, it's this S class, it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so if I have to wait a few more years, like eh. the same attitude I had back in 2021, I was like, well, okay, I mean, it sucks with what happened with XRP and various other things, but you know, whatever. I'm sure it's going to come back. And here we we just had another bull run. And I'm not saying it's over, but like, if you just if you genuinely believe that that the asset class gets bigger. What are you actually afraid of? What is actually happening to you? Like, what 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 are you doing to your, your yourself? That's why when it comes to investing, I, I always say we are our own worst enemies. It does not make sense to be fearful if you believe that the asset class, as time passes, keeps getting bigger. Or do you think that you know, this 15-year-old asset class, that was it, the best days are done, and then this is all just going to go away and go to zero? I mean, are, are you a P Peter Schiff type? Because then you should be afraid if you actually believe that. But th that's Peter Schiff. Like, you're, you're not Peter Schiff, right? <laughs> no, this is going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so since I know that I don't need to sell this now, I keep earning money, can put food on the table, everything's fine. As long as that's going down, cool. As long as we can, as long as we can all uh, manage the, the other aspects of our lives. Do you, do you have to have it, have your life-changing wealth today? Well, let's be adults about this. You don't, and it's okay. So just be patient. And again, I, I don't think it's going to come to that, but I'm just saying, have that in the back of your mind and you should be sleeping a lot more easily. Because it's another way of saying none of what's happening right now in terms of price action will actually matter by the time this is all said and done. It's just not. And we have 15 years of data to prove that to us. This, this time is not different. Now, as far as what's happening with XRP, uh, in recent months, I had been, I'd, I'd been saying, it's like, I, I cannot find an XRP chart analyst who thinks that XRP just isn't going to participate this market cycle. I was like, I can't find one who's rep reputable. So you can find all sorts of analysts, the toxic Bitcoin maxi trolls, and uh, analysts who, even if very popular and respected by some, uh, you know, have a history of hating XRP and having irrational calls on it, but then they're surprisingly right about their calls and other coins, just not XRP. So I, what I've said is, I, until recently, anyway, I couldn't find a single reputable analyst who thought XRP was not going to do well this market cycle, um, unless they were a hater, basically. And I, and I was like, if anybody can find the unicorn for me, let me know. And I came across the unicorn myself. Look at this. It is none other than chart analyst Alessio Rastani. And I'm a fan of this guy. Um, he's, there's, I've seen no evidence that he is biasing against XRP. In fact, there's actually evidence to the contrary. As the SEC attacked Ripple and, as a result, XRP holders, as it was bottoming, I can't remember how low it got at this point. I can't remember if it had cratered to... 23, 25 cents, or if it gotten to its low of 16 or 17 cents, but around that time period, several days or so after the SEC attacked, uh, while everybody's calling for XRP to go to zero and fall out of the top 10, which obviously didn't happen, 
Alessio Rastani is like, no, this is the bottom, and it's going to reverse and move to the upside. He's like, it's going to go to like a buck thirty or a buck forty. Uh, that's what he was targeting at the time. People thought he was insane, and he was right. He was right in short order, in fact. So th there, there is no, from what I've never seen, a single bit of bias against the asset itself. I believe he disconnects from that. So whether he's right or wrong, um, I, I, I just, we'll see. But I do believe he's absolutely being intellectually honest. And he published this video about a week ago titled, XRP is in trouble, here's why. And I talked about it at the time. Um, he is the only reputable analyst, non-XRP hater I've come across that says XRP is in trouble this market cycle, specifically XRP. He has said that if XRP drops to 35 cents, that will be a sufficient catalyst that will ultimately result in XRP dropping all the way down to 13 cents at least, if not further. And he's calling for that to happen in 2024 or early 2025. So what I, part of what I said at the time was, if that's going to happen then it's not going to be XRP going down in a vacuum by itself. I mean, there, I don't know what would have to happen for that to be the case. Find, find like a hole in the code of XRP. <laughs> It'd be hard to do after, considering it's 12 years old now. But, you know, something crazy like that, and then like, okay, well, I guess we got to abandon that. Okay, fine. Outside of something ridiculous like that, I said, XRP, I just, it's, it's very difficult for me to believe XRP is going to be hitting 13 cents unless the entire market melts and just falls apart, or there's a black swan event. And then I'd say, whatever. Okay. Um, but we did get kind of close to a, an initial level that he was warning about. So he actually, what he, so he did cite that 35 cent level, but he also warned that another major one to watch for is 42 cents for XRP. And we did get to 43.6 cents. And so I'm not a chart guy, but uh, I do know that uh, even though the asset class moves in tandem, if you have enough pressure, even if it's led by Bitcoin, if you hit a certain level, you can see an even greater cascading event on down. So in theory, you could. I, all I've said is, like, leading up to this again, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. That makes no sense to me. Uh, and, it, and it isn't. So, like, the fact that XRP got down here, this is this is not something unique to XRP. It's it's a market thing. Um, it's just it's market-wide. It just is here. So, uh, <laughs> just watch for it. He said watch for 42 cents and then, more importantly, watch for 35 cents. But if that breaks, then we're in serious trouble. Now, why am I not worried about that? Well, first of all, we're in a bull market, and I, you know, even though we're, we're at the range lows, fine, maybe they get taken out, uh, but they haven't. And I believe what's most probable is that we continue moving to the upside. And I understand that sometimes minority uh, positions can be found to be right, so Alessio Rastani here could be correct, but I follow a lot of reputable analysts, and again, almost everyone disagrees. So, and I find those arguments particularly persuasive and having been here since 2017, uh, the idea of just XRP doing its own thing while the rest of the market doesn't, that's a hard sell on me. And you don't need to be a chart guy to kind of cock your head sideways and look at Alessio over saying, no offense, like I'm a fan of him still. Because again, he, he is not your enemy because he's warning and he's being intellectually honest that he believes XRP is going to hit 13 cents. I really believe that he believes that. So he just because he has that opinion, he doesn't become our enemy, just to be clear. He's not being a toxic Bitcoin maxi troll. He's a great chart analyst. Uh, there's a reason that he has the following. He has like 385,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube. Uh, but it, it's a hard sell. Like I, I watched the video. I listened to the rationale. And even if he's got his wave counts right and all that jazz, and I'm not a chart guy, so I'm not pretending, I'm not going to have any uh, input on that specifically. It's a really hard sell for me. Because I just don't see how it would just XRP does that. I, I just is what it is. So we did get close to that, which is why I thought I'd mention it. But I will say here also, my investment thesis at its core is that utility matters and will win the day. So just like I cited, even if we're going into a bear market right now, I don't care because I believe at some point in the future, the market's going to be way bigger, so it's not going to hurt me anyway. So why would I be afraid right now? Well, similarly with XRP, as long as XRP continues to get adopted, there's more usage, more utility, more total value locks, pick a metric, then if humans, being the irrational biological robots they are, cause the price to go down in the short or midterm, whatever it may be, uh, even if it went down that low, as long as I don't see a fundamental shift in XRP itself in terms of it being adopted, and it's just uh, humans being speculative in nature and panicking, if that's all it is, that's never going to shake me out. I don't care what the price action is. I understand it's a big swing from its its all-time high. It's a big swing compared difference in price compared to its high for the last market cycle, but eh. So, it seems big subjectively to us. But if XRP is going to continue to be used, and we keep seeing, uh, I don't remember, wallets increase, more adoption, all that jazz, then in a decade from now, we're going to look back, on, we would look back on that and be like, oh yeah, that was a scary time for speculators in the moment. That, that's what would happen. 
And not that we'd even have to wait a decade. I'm making a broader point, though. It doesn't make sense to be fearful. If there's not a fundamental change, I'm not fearful. There would have to be a fundamental change in XRP. I will be more patient than anyone else. And if XRP actually dropped that low, even I would start buying more. And that's still my largest individual position. But I would be like, wow, this is way oversold. That's what I would believe. And I would, I would buy a lot more. And I, mind you, I haven't bought XRP since October 2024 because I went a little bit, a little bit crazy buying. <laughs> it's my largest holding. And I purchased nothing but other cryptocurrencies for basically almost four full years at this point. And XRP is still my largest holding. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm happy for that because I still think it's going to go ballistic this, this market cycle. But, but again, I'm just trying to help you with why I don't freak out over this stuff. So whether we're going into a bear market or specifically if, XRP, if, if Alessio's right and XRP tanks, eh, well, sucks to suck, I guess, but whatever. As long as there's not a fundamental shift, the market's going to realize that, wow, this thing's way oversold. Market should value this more. And, when, and, and then when participants in the market find those inefficiencies, they capitalize on them. That's what happens in, in investing. Find something that's undervalued, and in that case, XRP would be. So again, I don't, th I don't think that's most probable to happen. Um, and nothing but uh, respect for Alessio Rustani. It's just a hard sell for me personally. But even if he's right, my attitude is, eh, okay, whatever. Not going to matter. Adoption, adoption is just continuing. Big moves that are negative can happen, just like positive moves in crypto. But look, this thing's been consolidating for six and a half years. I have a feeling that when this goes, it's really going to go. And that's going to be that. So that's why I thought I'd highlight this in this video. It's just, I know there's so much fear in there and I like to have a stronger focus on days like this and just trying to like, you know, help a little bit on that front. Gather around the fire, children. It's story time with Uncle Moon Lambo. Yeah, one of those videos. That's what I'm trying to do here. While giving you perspective from reputable analysts out there. I'm trying to do both and I did. So that's the latest Moon Lambo hot jam. So I hope you feel a little bit better if you've been freaking out. But I'm telling you, if you genuinely believe the asset class just gets bigger, if you have a sufficient time horizon, if you don't need your money out of the market right now, and hopefully you don't, what, what are you worried about? Who cares? And that is why I do not get emotional about these markets in a nutshell. So keep your head about there. The best days for us in crypto, they are yet ahead. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.